Chuck. What's up, Neil? We're back. Yes, we are. <laughs> time, right. time for some more knowledge that you didn't think you needed. <laughs> <laughs> is that a positive thing, or is that? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I don't have to, let me think about that's that. A, that's a very good thing. It's always good to have knowledge that you didn't think you need, because then you realize, wow, I need that. I need that in my life. You know? Okay. So you've all heard, <clears throat> you and others for sure, have heard of wind chill factor. Yes. Okay. What is your understanding of wind chill factor? Okay. So, you know, they stopped calling it that. They now call it the real feel temperature. Okay. <laughs> That's what they call it now. Fine. All the, me all the meteorologists, they call it the real feel. So they say it's, uh, it's uh, 28 degrees. Uh, but with the, and then they say this, but with the wind chill, the real field temperature is 15 or okay. minus three or whatever. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So that's the, that's an accurate, completely correct understanding of our concept of wind chill factor. Okay. Gotcha. So I just want to explain why there is such a thing as a wind chill factor. Okay. Right? Okay. So your body has a skin temperature. It's about 97 degrees or so Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. So if you have just air sitting above your skin, okay, your, your, your skin is 97 degrees, okay. around there, plus or minus, and air is typically cooler than that, unless you live in, like, Texas, right? Some place where it's always very, very hot, and I'll get back to that in a minute. But usually the air is cooler than your skin. So now they worry because if the temperature gets very cold out, Watch what happens. You you go out, expose some skin, and let's say it's 32 degrees. You'll feel cold. Mm -hmm. Fine. And that's the, the air above your skin is removing heat from your skin. That's why you feel cold. Something is taking heat away from you, and it's the air. The air is sitting above your skin will be systematically drawing heat away from your body. Okay. If your body's losing heat, you will feel cold where it's having you lose heat. Okay. That okay? makes sense. That makes sense. Hmm. Right? So the air is taking heat away. But the air is just sort of sitting there doing that. Right. right? The 32 degree air. By the now, way, that's why I don't wear chaps in the wintertime. But go ahead. Okay. <laughs> that's why. Good reason. <laughs> among others, I would suspect. Okay. So now watch what happens. If there is a breeze, then the air that had just pulled heat out of you is now swapped with fresh 32 degree air. Oh, oh. Okay, so previously the heat that came out of your body warmed the air above it. Right. Just a little bit, just a right. little bit. Just a right. so, so what that feels like is what we say 32 degree air feels like, right? It's the combination of this. Gotcha. Now a breeze comes, wind comes, and that air gets shifted off fresh Cold air comes in, and now that's taking heat out. Okay? Gotcha. So it's, if this keeps up, the air is pulling heat out of your body at the same rate that colder air would be taking heat out of your body if it was stationary. Wow. So you do that calculation, and you find out, and I don't have the, the tables in front of me, so let's make up some numbers that okay. would be you know, sensible for this example. By so, the way, that's my favorite kind of science. To, to not, make up numbers. Since I'm not you, I just <laughs> make it up. Yeah, you, you can check this out on table. I don't have it like stuck in my head. But right. what you can say is air at a certain speed growing, up, let's say, 10 miles per hour across my skin mm -hmm. at 32 degrees is like... Air at 23 degrees, That's not perfectly blowing across still. my skin. That's perfectly still. Exactly. That is, by the way, okay, full disclosure now, I thought this was not even going to be that interesting. <laughs> 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 this is really interesting. I mean, this is, this is really cool because it makes so much sense. See, I told you, it's knowledge you didn't even know you needed. But go ahead, continue. I'm okay. fascinated. I'm fascinated. Okay, okay so now. Now, just while we're there, yeah, and this wasn't really the subject of this conversation, but I'm, we're there, so I'm going to throw it in. Well, you got okay. me now, so I got who you. Cares? Okay. <laughs> um, air is much less dense than water. Okay. Obviously. Right. Okay. All right. Much less dense by like a factor of a thousand or uh, multiple high hundreds. Okay. I forgot the number, but you can do the math. It just compare the densities. There's a factor there. Okay. All right. So that means when you're touching air. 
many fewer molecules are interacting with your skin right. than if you if it was water touching you. Right. If I have a mixture of water and ice, right. that will be 32 degrees. Okay? It just will be. That's how that works out. Yes. If I plunge your hand into that and keep your other hand out in the air at 32 degrees, your hand in the water, in the icy water, will freeze faster than your hand in the air will. I, 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 that's, I, guess what? I knew you were going to say that, but this is the first time that it actually made sense to me. Ma- made sense. Because, because many more molecules are touching you to, take this, to suck the heat out of your body. So you have more molecules on the surface of your skin to actually pull away the heat. Correct. That's so cool. Correct. And that is why you just explained something to me that I've always accepted, always understood to be true, never really questioned it because it's just a, it's one of those things that you just know that happens. When you want to make something cold, you have a can of beer or soda or a bottle. You don't just stick it in ice. You stick it in icy water or water that is better than icy water. You put it in icy water that's somehow moving and it will get colder so much quicker. Correct. So in other words, you can put a, a, your champagne in the refrigerator where it's only touching air or right. put it in an ice bucket where if it's only just touching solid ice, but there's still air between the solid ice, right. add water to it. Now you have, fro- you have 32 degree water. And by the way, if you want to get it even colder than that, you put salt on the ice. It melts the ice at the temperature the ice is. So the t- ice could be 20, 25 degrees. It'll melt the ice at 25 degrees. You have 25 degree water. And now you put it in and you, 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 you jiggle it as you right. do. Right. Uh, <laughs> like that. Yes. And then you're, you're, so you're basically creating a, a liquid cool chill factor. So, okay. But it's also why if I can send you out butt naked into 35 degree air, Okay. You could run around for a while. Not you know, me. You can even pump some energy. It'll be cold and uncomfortable. Right. But we'll find you alive at two hours later. No, okay? you'll find me dead of embarrassment. Okay? <laughs> okay. That's what you'll find me. I throw you into 35 degree water. Right. You're, 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 you're comatose in 15 minutes. Yeah, you're done. You're done. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's the same temperature. It's a matter of who's pulling heat away from you the most effectively. That's okay. amazing. Good so stuff. So that's the foundation here, but that's not the point of this conversation. Oh, what? There's that more? was not where we're headed. We're, no, excuse oh me. Oh, my God. This, I feel like I'm in a Ron Popeil infomercial for physics. <laughs> but wait, <laughs> there's more. <laughs> but wait. Order now. Order now. Okay. You'll also receive. Go uh, so ahead. here we go. You ready? What's the bonus? Okay. So let's raise the temperature some more. Let's make it... Um, 85 degrees. Let's make it 90 degrees outside. All right, it's 90 degrees okay. outside. That's still cooler than your skin temperature. Okay. It's still cooler. All right. So you'll feel that amount of heat. You, you, I'm a little uncomfortable, I uh, whatever. But the air is still pulling heat out of your body. Right. Okay, but not but but you you know what 90 degrees should feel like when you walk out there, okay? Right. So watch what happens. Now a breeze comes. So whatever rate 90 degree air was taking heat out of your body, right. it will now take heat out of your body faster. Because so, of fresh pock for the same reasons the same we were talking reasons. about wind chill factor. Except right. we don't call it wind chill factor in the summertime. We call it a cool breeze. We call it refreshing. We call it a cool breeze, but that air is the same, same. temperature as the air that was there before you had the breeze. Right. So it's the not breeze, the breeze is not cooler not at breeze, all. No. The breeze isn't cool. I am, baby. (laughs) (laughs) So so cool. So our vocabulary changes from wind chill factor to cool breeze. Right, but it's it's still it's still a chill factor. It's still making you cooler. Yeah, that's great. And wind chill factor is the same temperature air coming across your 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 body. Right, same temperature air. Okay. Yeah, just, except uh, uh, the, the problem with that, though, is that weathermen will feel like dumbasses when they go, you know, and we're looking at a high of 97 with a wind chill of 93. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that, that would be perfectly legitimate to say. Right. That. Okay. Nothing wrong there. Right. Okay. So, and while we're there, let me add this. There are two ways you can feel hot. One of them is you're not losing heat as quickly as you should. 
Okay? Right. Another one is you're directly receiving radiant energy from the sun. Okay. Directly. So photons right. moving through the atmosphere and impinging on you. Right. This is enhanced if you wear dark clothing. Uh-huh. Okay. Dark clothing absorbs all the sunlight. Right. White clothing reflects most of it. Right. Okay. I, I have a skin suit of dark clothing. <laughs> there you go. Right. <laughs> so that's why the clothing colors would generally changes from summer to winter. Right. Okay. You want to stay cooler in the winter, warmer in the summer. You wear lighter clothes in the summer, reflecting this radiant energy that's trying to get in your body and vice versa in the winter. So now watch. Let's say you're on, on a, at a baseball game mm -hmm. and uh, no, it's a little league game and you're there and you're out in the bleachers and it's hot and you say, I got to go where it's cool. So you get up and you go under a tree. In the shade. In the shade. Okay. The air in the shade is not necessarily and is hardly ever cooler than the air that's out in sunlight. Right. Because air mixes very yeah, right. efficiently. It, 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 there you go. Right. Okay. Yeah. But you say it's cooler because what you have done is subtracted away the radiant heat hitting you from the sun. Right. And that radiant heat is not participating in the temperature of the air. The air is transparent to the radiant heat. It's why you can see the sun in the daytime. Mm -hmm. Okay. Air is transparent to sunlight. So going under the tree, the air is the same temperature. You're subtracting away a, a source of heat that is the sun itself. That's right. It. And then when a breeze comes, you got it. It's margarita time. <laughs> margarita time. Now it's exactly. margarita time. Okay. I got shade. I got a cool breeze, okay. which is but, not even a cool breeze. But wait, there's more. Uh-oh. Here we go. Okay. All right. The reason why you sweat is... I've been caught. <laughs> <laughs> That's different. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, so if you sweat, there's a bead of sweat on your body. Right. Okay. Now, the, the bead of sweat is about the same temperature as your skin. Okay. The breeze blows across your sweat and across your skin. Your skin will feel cool. That's fine. But what that warm air will do to the bead of sweat is have that bead of sweat participate in taking heat out of your body because it requires heat to evaporate okay. and your body's hotter than the air so where's it going to get the heat to do this your body okay these we're talking about cases where you're 97 degrees and the air is like low 90s okay right so so the bead of sweat now says i want to evaporate i will take heat from your body to do that and to evaporate a bead of sweat takes more energy than just the energy that's pulling out of your skin from moving air. Gotcha. That's why when you sweat and then have a breeze across you, uh, it, it's way cooler than if you didn't sweat. You ain't lying. That's Fonzie cool right there. Bro. That's funny, okay. That's Fonzie cool. And in fact, yeah. in theme parks where everybody's got to wait online, they have these sort of misters, misters. out there. Yes, they that, do. That if you're not otherwise sweating, it'll put water on your, on your body. Without you having to have sweat it there, that water then evaporates and then you feel cooler. That's excellent. Okay, so your body does this to cool down more effectively. All right, so now here's the problem. If we're almost, almost all the way there. If it's high humidity, uh -oh. sweat has a hard time evaporating. Right. Because there's so, moisture in the air. There's moisture in the air and it's trying to compete. It's trying to get into the air where there's already moisture. All right, and it's a contest between who can put the moisture in the air if the moisture or if the air already has moisture. So right. you start sweating, the breeze comes, it has a hard time evaporating the sweat. Okay, so the sweat just stays, and you feel dank, you feel hot, you feel wet, you are uncomfortable, and so they have this they they have a heat index or something. It's the ability of your body to cool down under those conditions, and the lower the humidity, the better able your body is to accomplish this. Nice. Okay, so now we're ready for the final offer. Okay. <laughs> what happens if the air temperature goes above your skin temperature? Oh, if your air if the air okay, temperature so is above watch. your skin temperature, let me say you explode. <laughs> so watch what happens now. Now the air blows across your skin, but the air is hotter than your skin. So your skin is saying, hey, I want to 
cool you down. So your skin takes heat away from the air and puts it in your body. Well, if your skin is absorbing heat from its environment rather than giving heat to the environment, you, instead of feeling cold, you will feel hot. So we go from a wind heat chill factor to a wind heat factor. Gotcha. That's why when you open an oven and the flowing air comes out, you don't feel cooler from that. You feel hotter. Of you course. ever been behind a jet engine when it turns on? You feel hotter. Okay? That air is hotter than your skin temperature. It's a Can't wind I've had that heat factor. Experience. Okay. I don't stand behind jet engines often, <laughs> okay, but I'm going to take your word for it. <laughs> so it's a wind heat factor. That's why if the temperature goes above your skin, turning on a fan... No. Gotcha. Fans are bad when the temperature is above your skin temperature. Because so watch what happens. Watch what happens. Watch what ahead. happens when you sweat. So now you sweat. You're like, I'm going to sweat so I can cool down. The bead of sweat is there on your arm. Hot air blows across it. And the sweat says, hey, I can evaporate by taking heat from that hot air. So it evaporates using heat from the air instead of heat from your body. Heating you up even more. Even more. Not Ooh. only that, it's also dehydrating you. So you are losing liquid and heating up in the presence of moving air that's hotter than your skin temperature. Wow. So they have found old people in homes where if the air conditioner breaks and they put on a fan and the temperature rises, they're dehydrated and they're dead from um, heat, uh, heat exposure. Yeah, and one of those is a real problem. It's just... So the whole range of what happens when air blows across your body... We have different terms and different ways of thinking about it, but it's the same phenomenon. It's which, what direction is heat going? When, the, when you put two, two surfaces or two um, media in contact with one another. Wow, that is, now this has become something that's very, very useful. We started out just you know learning some stuff, but this is really, people should really look at this, especially since our summers are getting hotter and we're having more days than ever that are above 100 degrees. Uh, this is really useful information now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and so, and there it is. And that's why in the summer you should always drink a lot of water because your body's trying to cool you down. Right, and sweet. So there it is. You heard it here. Chuck, always good to have you, man. Always a pleasure. This has been Star Talk. Neil deGrasse Tyson here signing out. As always, bidding you keep looking up. Mm -hmm.